Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episode 12 video. And since they made the, the big announcement about Marvel not going to Comic-Con, I'll explain that too. There's a lot of stuff going on in the Marvel Universe right now. Just to start with the Comic-Con stuff, I know that was a big WTF for everyone. So here, here's the deal. James Gunn did a Facebook Q&A like he does every once in a while, where someone asked him if he was going to San Diego Comic-Con, and he replied, I don't think that Marvel is going, so I'm probably not going either. I'm not really sure. So everyone was kind of like, wait, what? Did he just say Marvel isn't going to Comic-Con? That's kind of a big deal. Cut forward to like another day or so, and he was like, no, I wasn't lying to the fans. I'm, I'm pretty sure Marvel's not going. That's why most of the actual news reporters in Hollywood right now are reporting that Marvel isn't going to Comic-Con. They haven't made it official. Marvel isn't going to say anything about this definitively. Like, they'll either show up or they won't. But they're probably not going to do a big Hall H panel. Just to add a little bit of context, Comic-Con was moved way up to the beginning of July this year. They have Ant-Man coming out like a couple weeks after that. So by the time Comic-Con hits, they'll have already spent most of their marketing budget on the movie. So there's, there's really no point in them marketing the movie at Comic-Con. They don't gain anything from it. Plus, they already did their big Phase 3 panel earlier this year where they announced all the movies that are coming out in the next four or five years. So they don't need to do that again. They've already done that. On top of that, because Marvel is Disney, Disney owns D23, they might be doing some presentations at D23 this year. That doesn't mean that Marvel's never going to do a Hall H panel at Comic-Con again. It just means that they're almost powerful enough, like they almost have enough of a marketing machine that they don't need Comic-Con. Like they have their own conventions that they can do this at. I think it's actually a really good idea. It certainly makes my weekend at Comic-Con a lot easier. Marvel as a studio does not benefit as much from Comic-Con as other studios do. So it just doesn't make as much sense for them to spend a ton of money if they're not going to be promoting anything specific. I'll post more updates about Marvel Comic-Con stuff in the future if they release any official updates. But, but don't worry, it's not going to be a huge deal. So on to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Just careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet. If you guys didn't recognize him, Eddie McClintock was the Kree soldier in this episode. So I'm gonna explain him first and what he means about the, the TV universe because it's kind of a Guardians crossover, but not really. Like they, they said some very specific things in the episode that made it seem like they're not gonna do something like this again. His name in the episode was Vintak. That is not a character from the comics, but it is a sign that Marvel is slowly bringing cosmic stories and Earth-based stories together. As you can imagine, this is a roadmap to the end of Phase 3 in Avengers Infinity War, where the Avengers will have a cosmic story, whereas right, right now they're having mostly Earth-based stories. As Sif said at the end of the episode, I'm going to take him back to Hala, his home planet. They won't bother you again. That probably means we won't be seeing a whole lot of other Kree on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Coulson said, don't worry, I'll track down the rest of these Diviners. So... The rest of this season is going to be tracking down all the other Inhumans. I, obviously, the teaser for the next episode implies we're going to meet a whole bunch of them. Maybe not all of them, but definitely most of them. So it's a little bit of them winking at the audience. It's like, yes, this is going on in outer space. Cosmic things, you know, tides of the universe, as Sif said, are influencing what's happening on Earth. But they're not going to be happening on Earth all the time. And yes, the Bobby Mack stuff, the secret planning... Probably Secret Warriors from the comics. I, I don't think it's Secret Avengers. I think that'll happen like after Captain America Civil War. That's part of my top five moments. So don't worry, I'll, I'll totally explain it. So top five moments. Number five, welcome back Sif. They buried the lead a little bit, but Sif was following Vintak to Earth to keep him from taking the Diviners, or at least trying to find out what it was he was looking for. She kept saying the word Kava. That is the Cree word for keys. They ended up going back to the original dig site where they found the Diviners in the, in the first episode. Remember where Whitehall had that case? So this episode is a direct link to that flashback to the Agent Carter flashback in episode one. I always give the writers a giant high five when they're able to tie the arc back to big WTF moments in the first couple episodes. Also, some of the funniest moments in the episode, some of the funniest jokes were Agent May talking to Sif about stuff that she couldn't remember, like Thor. I don't know why, but this name makes me smile. And then you see Agent May just smile herself and go, I know exactly why she's smiling. Odin? Yeah, you've totally met Odin. You guys are bros. I cheered a little bit when she said that because remember, Loki has been posing as Odin since the end of Dark World. So if he sent Sif on this mission to find the Diviners, it was actually Loki sending her on the mission. We will definitely talk more about what's going on with Loki and Asgard because it'll tie in with Avengers Age of Ultron and Thor Ragnarok, but, but that's not going to happen for a while. So add a tab in Chrome, we'll come back to that later, don't worry. On to number four, Bobby and Mac tease a new secret organization inside S.H.I.E.L.D., probably Secret Warriors. I was really happy they added a lot of context to this secret Bobby-Mac plot. 
The language she used is very important. She said, remember what happened when we found out our friends were Hydra? And then Max said, we are not Hydra. That implies that whatever shadow organization that they have running is not bad. They're not evil. For those that haven't read the comics, there are many secret organizations inside S.H.I.E.L.D. There's S.W.O.R.D., although technically that's not a secret. That's kind of like a a cosmic space-based version of S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't think that that's what they're doing. There's also Secret Warriors, which is like a big comic book line. And then there's Secret Avengers. All of those things kind of tie in around like the Secret Invasion, Dark Reign era of the comic books. What I think is going on, what I think they're doing is Secret Warriors, just because the showrunners would not stop talking about Secret Warriors last year. Like they were huge fans of that storyline in the comics. And Daisy Johnson, the the character from the comics that Sky is, that they turned her into, the Inhuman, she is part of the Secret Warriors team. If you guys have a Marvel Unlimited subscription, you can totally read that Secret Warriors storyline for free. So check it out. On to number three, everyone figures out that Sky is one of the Inhumans. I'm so happy they didn't drag this reveal out. Nothing is worse than a TV show teasing us with someone having super awesome powers and then never letting the character have fun with them. I was a little worried with the way Sky was acting whenever the show came back. Like she, she was in quarantine. She started to freak out. You want Karnak to come judo slap her silly. Get a hold of yourself. You have awesome powers. Have some fun. Now that the whole team knows about it, they can deal with it and they can get there much quicker. So by the end of the season, I think Sky will have a better command of her abilities. She'll she'll be more self-assured. Not right away. Half the group is still freaking out about it, which is a little frustrating, but they'll get over it. You could look at it as like a minor tease for Civil War from the comics, but but that's not what's going on. There was a lot of language that sounded very Civil War-esque. Like, these people are freaks. No, these people are humans. We need to regulate them. We need to lock them away. Civil War in the comics, if you haven't read it, you could also read it on Marvel Unlimited. It's all about the idea of superhero registration. Captain America Civil War the movie is going to be different from that. On to number two, meet Vintech, Kree from Hala. Most of you guys are probably familiar with the Kree from Guardians of the Galaxy. Ronan the Accuser was a Kree, but he was part of the Accuser Corps, and he was a fanatic. So he's like a crazy example of the Kree. There are Kree that are totally normal, totally nice people. Vintech explains he's just trying to help. He's just trying to take the Diviners so that they can't create more quote-unquote monstrosities. I'll explain that in a second because there's a lot of extra context to be added there. Eddie McClintock, awesome actor. I'm totally sad Warehouse 13 got canceled. He was a little ridiculous. I mean, I like him when he's playing it a little straighter. He's a great comedic actor. To explain the monstrosities thing, so there is like a subform of Inhumans that are more genetically deformed than others. They try to prevent that with selective breeding. Genetic tailoring is a really important idea for the Inhumans. They practice thousands of years of selective breeding so they can create better Inhumans. But every once in a while, you get like someone who's really, really deformed. You could look at that as a teaser for Reyna because she is more physically deformed. But the way Vintak used the term in the episode, he calls them all monstrosities. So like even Sky, who looks, you know, totally normal, is a monstrosity by his definition. They do stray a little bit into after school special territory when they're like, okay, you're not deformed, you're special. Like in the last episode when the reader rescued Reyna and he says, hello, beautiful. He himself is, you know, obviously a little bit deformed. I'm not a huge fan when they get really on the nose with with their morality like this. Like it's like, yeah, of course, everyone is supposed to be special. We, we get it. Really though, my number one WTF awesome moment was when Vintech explained the Kree Scroll War and Terra Genesis. I've already done a lot of videos on the Inhuman, so I'll add some links in the description. But the Kree Scroll War was where the Inhuman story was born out of. Like Stanley created it and then kind of weaved it into that. The Kree were trying to create a super race to use as a weapon against the Scrolls. Obviously, the Scrolls kind of exist in the Fantastic Four universe. It's a little up in the air as to, as to whether or not Marvel has the rights to use them. That's why Joss Whedon used the Shatauri in the Avengers film. Otherwise, it would have been a scroll invasion. Vintech actually spelled it out pretty clearly. The Kree, at a certain point, realized that the Inhumans as a project were going downhill. Like, they were going to result in something really terrible happening. So they just abandoned it. They just, like, kind of closed up shop, you know, locked the doors and walked away. And the Inhumans were left to themselves. That was thousands of years ago. So Atalan, like, you know, the royal family, Black Bolt, they all arose out of an independent society that evolved on their own. So the Kree today don't have a whole lot of interaction with the Inhumans. And yes, Atalan is out there. They, d- they just haven't introduced it in, in the film universe. I will be interested to see if they mention it by name on the series. Probably not. I'm not expecting it, but they might. Here's my big question for you guys. If they could have any more, like, cosmic cameos, like stuff from the Guardians of the Galaxy universe on the TV show... Who would you want to see? 
Now, now remember, like they're probably not going to have Chris Pratt or anyone like that. But any, you know, alien races, who do you want to see on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? I think the next logical step would be for Coulson to make jokes about talking dogs like Cosmo or Howard the Duck. Just jokes. I don't think there's any way we're going to see him on the show. Here's some of the bigger Easter eggs I saw. There, there was a whole bunch of loaded comments, loaded dialogue. It was a lot of fun. Starting off with full Mortal Kombat. So next week, Kevin Tancheron, he's the brother of showrunner Marissa Tancheron, is going to be directing. He is the one who started the Mortal Kombat web series at Machinima a long, long time ago. He was going to do a Mortal Kombat reboot movie, but he passed on the project after a while. So Kevin Tancheron, Mortal Kombat to Mortal Kombat reference in the episode. When Bobby and Hunter had that sex scene and he said, then you turn into a bit of a nightmare. She actually, she got mind control. She got brainwashed in the comics, the Mockingbird character, and was evil for a while. So she literally turned into something of a nightmare. I already explained the Sif, Loki, Odin stuff. But when she says only seven species across the nine realms require nitrogen to breathe, she was talking about the Badoon, the Brood, the Diorates, the Phalanx, the Shi'ar, the Skrulls. Very clearly, Marvel does not have the film and TV rights for all of those races, but, but most of them. So it's just a nice teaser for things that they could always introduce at some point. I know everyone really liked the hammer jokes. There were so many hammer jokes in this episode, especially the little tiny hammer that Eddie McClintock was carrying around. I don't think that he's part of the Accuser Corps, but Kree do have weapons and armor, the Accuser Corps, that's coded for them. Like he said, only he could operate it. Ronan's hammer from Guardians of the Galaxy is a slightly different one. It's, it's like a little bit more powerful. It's called a universal weapon. But most of the Accuser Corps have hammers like that. And huge congratulations to the winner of my Avengers Age of Ultron trailer giveaway. It's just a subscription to the Collector Corps. That's Marvel's Funko Pop subscription service. It's the only way to get the Hulkbuster Pop. Please message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact info. So like I said, I put more links in the description for my videos on the Kree, Guardians of the Galaxy stuff, and the Inhumans. While you guys wait for next week's episode, you can click here to catch up on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. if you guys are behind. And you can click here for the last Age of Ultron trailer. Starting to get a little bit cooler than the previous trailers. Lots more Ultron and the Vision. Thank you so much for watching. So let's all do the thing. I'll see you guys tonight.